Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the new discoveries in regards to our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and actually in regards to a somewhat old mystery. The mystery that for the past few decades was referred to as the missing satellite problem. The problem of missing satellites, but in this case, satellites orbiting galaxies. And here we're of course talking about different types of smaller galaxies in orbit around the Milky Way. Although technically not all of them are in orbit, and some of them are just very close to us. But as the name suggests, for many decades there was a bit of a problem. Not enough of them were seen in the night skies, even though a lot more were expected. And so let's discuss some of these new studies and some of these new discoveries that basically create a bit of a different problem. And the problem now is practically the opposite of what it was two decades ago. Now the scientists discovered way too many satellites, and once again it's a bit difficult to explain. But first, ok, so what exactly do scientists mean by too many or too few satellites? I mean, who actually makes these rules about how many satellites a typical galaxy should have? Well, today most of these ideas are basically based on modeling. Not so much the observations, but instead various supercomputer simulations where various physical models try to predict what's going to form at the end. Here's actually the most famous one, TNG50, created by the Illustrious Project. And here, in pretty much every single one of these models, when you put a bunch of gas and dark matter in similar conditions and similar gravity to what we have in the real universe, you basically end up with a bunch of galactic shapes. But around these shapes, as things start orbiting around, and as galactic halos develop, we actually observe additional shapes. And so normally, in a typical galactic halo, we're actually going to also have tiny clouds of hydrogen and helium orbiting in much smaller subhalos, possibly 100 million to 1 billion stars in total, and basically resembling a typical dwarf galaxy, many of which have been discovered in the last decade. Now that by itself is not really a problem, as a matter of fact all of this has been confirmed, but it's really the numbers that seem to not match. In pretty much most of these simulations, when using the values for a gravitational constant and the approximate amount of mysterious dark matter, which is supposed to represent 85% of all matter in the entire universe, all of these simulations ended up producing hundreds of different subhalos that would then turn into dwarf galaxies, which kind of initially did not make sense. It didn't make sense because by early 2000s, only approximately 10 dwarf galaxies have been discovered around the Milky Way, with this image right here kind of showing us what all of this looked like. And so something here was obviously not adding up. But this mystery started to be resolved pretty quickly once we got better telescopes. And also once the scientists realized that the galactic formation may actually not be as efficient as initially thought. And so in approximately a decade and a half, we went from having just these 10 dwarf galaxies to basically just over 60 confirmed as of early 2024. And this by itself kind of resolved some of these issues. And so even though hundreds of these galaxies were predicted initially, we now knew that at least 60 definitely existed around the Milky Way. This is at a distance of about 1.4 million light years away from the galaxy, and as I mentioned, not all of them are in orbit. Some of them are passing by, but many of them will be swallowed over time. And only two of them are bright enough to be visible with the naked eye, in the large and small Magellanic clouds. But obviously this was still not a perfect resolution to this missing satellites problem. We had 60, but the scientists expected over 200. And so for the past 5 or so years, a lot of researchers out there tried to basically once and for all resolve this. And they did this by using even more advanced telescopes, and specifically the ones that are actually able to detect some of the dimmest objects in the entire universe. The telescopes such as the Subaru telescope, along with the Hubble telescope, that are able to find some of the faintest objects in the night skies. Here's actually another dwarf galaxy, known as Leo 4, even though technically there's really not much to see here. And so to conduct some of these recent studies, the researchers decided to do something really simple. They picked a relatively small area of the night skies, and then they used some of the most accurate data from the 7-year survey by the Subaru telescope to try to find these dwarf galaxies in it. And while surprisingly, in a relatively small patch of the night sky, they've discovered five new, never-before-seen galaxies. You can see some of them right here, with the three previously discovered galaxies seen as triangles, and the two recently discovered, Sextant 2 and Virgo 3, visible as red and blue stars. 
but most of these are approximately 500,000 light years away from the Milky Way galaxy. And although at the first glance this might imply that we now have like, what, 65 dwarf galaxies around the Milky Way, in reality this actually creates a bit of a problem. A new problem. The excess satellite galaxy problem. And the reasoning here is really simple. As I mentioned previously, using simulations the assumption here was that we should have approximately 220 satellites in the halo of the Milky Way galaxy. Which means that on average, in a relatively similar point of space, we should maybe observe approximately 4 galaxies on average. Yet instead, the evidence from the Subaru telescope points at approximately 9 to 10 galaxies, implying that the Milky Way potentially hides 500 dwarf galaxies, with most of them completely hidden. Or basically, there seems to be about 2 to 3 times discrepancy between the observations and what's predicted. And so this strange overabundance of galaxies basically now creates a completely opposite problem. Instead of not having enough galaxies before, scientists now realize that they were just difficult to see and there seems to be way more than expected. Ok, but I guess that's just one galaxy, the Milky Way. Maybe something here is just a little bit weird, maybe once again the Milky Way, like in a lot of other cases, is just an exception, and so maybe this is not something to worry about yet. But then there was another study not so long ago that in essence discovered something very very similar using a different observational survey, and this time in approximately 50 galaxies up to 150 million light years away from planet Earth. And though once again the simulations predicted 3 to maybe 4 galaxies, here they discovered up to 10. Or in other words, this survey could not possibly see in those galaxies just because they don't produce enough light, yet on average around those galaxies at least 10 dwarf galaxies were discovered. And that basically creates an entirely new problem that we cannot answer. Or obviously cannot answer yet. For some reason it looks like galaxies surprisingly have way more satellites, not way less. Which to some extent is both ironic and funny, because the researchers were trying to solve the problem that was the opposite, and though they solved it, they now have an entirely new issue. And it's currently difficult to explain exactly what's happening. Now on the one hand, this is probably once again a problem with simulations. Like so many other scientists suggested, maybe this is actually because we don't really consider magnetic fields in a lot of these galactic simulations. Maybe by introducing powerful magnetic fields, which might have been much stronger in the early universe when these galaxies were super active, these primordial fields could have actually caused matter to clump much more, thus producing more satellites. And interestingly, if this prediction is correct, we should even start finding various dwarf galaxies with miniature satellites of their own, or basically even smaller satellite galaxies orbiting around them. This hasn't been discovered yet, but that's one of the predictions about these powerful primordial magnetic fields. Or maybe this is just a problem with simulations for some other reason. Obviously maybe there's a problem with the gravitational constant, or maybe there's a problem with knowing how much dark matter there is, or how it actually interacts with galaxies. Likewise, it could also just be the problem with the overall resolution of these simulations, as we usually focus on much larger objects as opposed to tinier satellites. And so, in essence, it doesn't really mean that the cosmological model is broken or that the field of astrophysics is in trouble, it just suggests that there's something we don't understand once again and that something needs to be tweaked a little bit. But I guess more importantly, it also suggests that we once again need more observations, just like the ones that discovered these dwarf galaxies that we previously could not see before. But in a nutshell, this is also a really good example on how astronomy and astrophysics progresses over time. We went from this, a small number of satellites, and not knowing why there are so few of them out there, to something that looks closer to this, just last year, and to now having this, possibly, times 10. And naturally, a completely new problem that nobody expected and nobody has an answer for yet. But because of these new mysteries and new discoveries, all of this will potentially lead to discoveries of completely new phenomena we never knew existed, and possibly help us explain a lot of other mysteries in the universe, just by looking at what's happening in our neighborhood. And so I guess until someone resolves what's actually happening here, like for example, maybe it is these primordial magnetic fields after all, all of this will probably remain a mystery for at least a few more years. And so until we find a solution, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.